There we go. Hello, hello everyone. This is David Pizzat again, and today we are here with Destination Wedding Photographer based out of Portland. Um, and we have Robert Hill. Robert Hill, you want to introduce yourself and say hello to everyone that's watching us today here on YouTube and also on our fan page. Um, yeah. Robert? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, my name is Robert J. Hill. Um, I usually don't introduce myself with the J, but uh, brand-wise, there's a lot of Robert Hills in the world, so I added the J as a little little something extra. Um, I am a traveling and destination wedding photographer, uh, shoot somewhat locally here in Portland, Oregon, um, but travel for most of our work um, all over the world. Awesome, really cool. Now, um, Robert, can you share with us, uh, how, many, how many years of experience have you been doing this? And uh, also, do you work alone or have you always worked alone or do you have uh, other members or, uh, that help you, other, other photographers? Yeah, yeah, so I've been, I've been shooting for about 10 years now, um, give or take. And um, when I first started out, I shot, I started my own business when I was 16 um, and really just did not know what I was doing, had no idea, no clue how to run a business and whatnot. And so about four or five years in, I just got super burnt out, um, shut everything down, took a full-time job for a few years, jumped back in the industry um, right after I got married, um, kind of with a new vision, new plan. And since then, it's just kind of taken off uh, the last four years or so into exactly what I wanted it to be. So uh, I've primarily shot by myself, um, but I do have a team now. Um, and that team is is growing. So, awesome. We'll get back to the the team. I, I have a question for for that that you just mentioned. You have a team now, but uh, I want to pause and rewind just a little bit. You said that there for a while you you, you got out of it and then you came back into it um, four years ago. Um, yeah. Do you mind sharing, Robert? Uh, it, I don't know if this is personal, or what, but. Did, and if it's two person, you have to share. But uh -huh. what happened there, Robert? It seems like you got. Re did you get re inspired, or four year, four years before? What, what was going on? What, what went through your head? Obviously, you got married, but yeah. was there something else that pushed you to to say, "Hey, you know what? I, I can't leave this. I, you know, I have to go back to it." Or can can you tell me what exactly? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so um, before I ever picked up a camera, um, I was actually, my first love was video. Um, and so I was doing video for several years. Um, my dad, who's a photographer as well, bought me a, my first camera, a little Nikon D D50, and um, jumped right into the photography world. Um, but when I launched my first business, I didn't really have much of a vision, much of a focus at all. And so, um, I mean, just within the photography, I was shooting everything imaginable. Um, and, uh, but that wasn't everything that I offered. I also did video, web design, graphic design, um, printing, like I did all sorts of different things. And so taking everything that came my way, it just, it just got too much. Um, and, and because I was really young as well, not knowing what I was doing, I hadn't, um, I didn't really have many people that were kind of guiding me in really investing in my education as a photographer and that sort of thing. And so um, because of that, I think I just eventually found burnout because of getting taken advantage of not really knowing what I was doing, not liking who I was working with a lot, um, or even the type of things I was working, uh, like the type of shoots I was doing and whatnot. And so, um, that is kind of what eventually led me to burnout along with being young and being offered a full-time job. Um, I jumped out and then when, uh, my, my style in just the wedding world back in the day as well, all that I really knew was the very classical style. And so... It was a lot of church and ball, ballroom weddings, um, you know, brides with, you know, columns and big cathedrals and things like that. And, uh, and those are fantastic, but they weren't the most inspiring thing for me. And so um, that's because that's all I ever knew. I jumped out. And when I got married, it was the exact opposite. Um, we had like super hippie wedding in the woods, um, lights strung up everywhere. It was just like a perfect magical day. Um, uh, we walked down the aisle to like a Lord of the Rings song <laughs> from their soundtrack. Uh, and so after that, I think I was really inspired by just thinking like, man, I need to, um, I really want to just shoot my wedding over and over and over. And so um, from that, that's when I kind of jumped back into it with that vision. And then it just kind of took off from there. And uh, honestly, like even when I started back, I had no idea like, really where it would go um, and how fast it would go. 
uh, get to that point, and it just kind of took off. And yeah. Wow, that's great. Um, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I, I think that uh, a lot of times we, like you mentioned, um, we, we go from from thinking that what we're doing, trying to take everything, it's the right thing, you know, and and, and sometimes we, we feel, you know, um, that we are in the right track, but I, I think that sometimes we have to pause and see the whole picture, the whole complete yeah. picture, and, and kind of, you know, reinvent ourselves, you know? Um, yeah. for and, and that's something that I constantly tell myself, you know, I can't just uh, just settle where I'm at, you know, I, right. I gotta look for the next big thing, you know, and, and, and my, and I, I, think, I think it's honestly, it's, it's something that's a little, I think this is probably the hardest thing for most photographers is we jump into this industry and we like, because we're visual creatures and we just want to take photos and we're like, man, if I could make money doing this, that would be amazing. But, um, I think that a lot of times people miss or they jump over the, like, what is it that I really want to do and how can I build a business and a brand around, uh, you know, what I'm really wanting out of life rather than just taking photographs for a living. Cause I think that's where at first I got caught up and like, Oh man, I could just, I've got a camera. I can make a few bucks doing this. And that's what eventually just kind of spiraled downwards to me just wanting to just quit and put my camera on the shelf. Right now, now Robert, uh, here's your second question. Um, you know, you said that you started by yourself, and now you have a team. Can can you tell me how you work that? How how is it that you're doing business now with with? Yeah, yeah. With so uh, this is actually uh, we have not shared any of this yet. This is like brand new information. We're releasing more this week on our blog, but um, we have. I feel like I feel like I've just hit a ceiling. Like I feel like um, uh, one of the things I love about the photography industry and just you know, running a business and stuff is the, um, dreaming something up and, and seeing that come to fruition over, you know, however much time. And I feel like over the last four years, like I've somehow figured out how to make my dreams come true as cliche as that sounds. Um, and in that, I, I feel like I can't really go any, any more. Um, I've got a philosophy and, a, and everything is set up within the business and the brand and how we do things and whatnot. And, um, uh, I don't think I could physically take on any more, um, weddings with how we go about doing them and such. And so I've recently, uh, my friend, John sitting back over here, um, hey, John. Is, uh, <laughs> he's been, how's, he's how's been that light room coming along? Those images, <laughs> how's the light room coming along? I'm building previews right now. But... He's building previews. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah. So John has, uh, John's been a good friend of mine for a long time and, uh, we've shot weddings all over the world together with just crazy circumstances and crazy stories that go along with each of those. And so, um, right, wait, 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 wait. I know you guys have some really good stories. Uh, can you share one of them with us? Uh, you know, hmm. all back there and you guys, uh, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, there at least one, one crazy wedding you guys went out there and destination. Yeah. We did, um, way back. yeah, so we did in, in 2014, um, my wife and I, uh, my wife, Emily and I, we went to, we were, we were just kind of at this point in our life where we were ready for a big change. And so, um, we decided just to sell everything and move out of our place, uh, literally everything minus a few boxes of stuff. Um, and we pretty much hit the road, traveled for about 10 months, uh, shooting weddings all over the world. Um, at the time, John, uh, John, he shoots a lot of humanitarian photography, which is amazing. And, um, he was working in a hospital in a little village called Kajabi, uh, North, Northwest, I believe of, uh, Nairobi in Kenya. So he was there for an entire year photographing these life changing surgeries for children and really documenting their stories, getting to know them and stuff. And just very intense images are absolutely mind blowing. Um, but, uh, so in that process, we, kind of another long story short, we, we have a friend in Kenya that was getting married. Um, and so me and Emily headed over to Kenya for the wedding to, for me to shoot it. John was going to shoot with me. So we stayed with him, um, in Kajabi for a little while. And then both of us went into Kenya uh, or into Nairobi, um, shot this wedding, which was absolutely insane. Like Kenyan weddings are mind blowing, uh, just with how, how different the culture is over there, how different they operate. Um, there ended up being, I think like 
nine photographers and videographers on the day of just because of how they do things. It was really crazy. Um, uh, and so we shot that together. Um, almost got caught in a gun situation in downtown Nairobi the day before the wedding. Uh, and then two days after the wedding, me and Emily headed to Southeast Asia. Um, fast forward two weeks, I'm in like a little, uh, I'm in a temple in Vietnam and I, my phone rings and I'm like, my phone wasn't supposed to be working. And I answer, I'm like, hello. And it's John. And he's like, Hey, where are you? And I'm like, I'm in Vietnam. How are you calling me right now? Oh, and God. I don't even know how he got my number, honestly. And, uh, and he was like, Hey, I just got into work and they don't need me for the next week. So I'm going to come meet up with you. And I was like, okay. So that after, like literally we got off the phone, John packed a bag, headed to the airport, booked a flight to Cambodia. And we met 17 hours later in Cambodia and spent a week together shooting in temples and whatnot. And, um, I say that last part just cause that's, I feel like that's a little bit of our brands. Like it's, it's very, um, out there, very like adventurous, very like, just let's do it. Is it crazy enough? Let's do it. Um, and so, uh, I think over the years of just having these stories with John like that, um, at least for the start of the team, like he, there's no one better I could have asked to be a part. And so now he's in Portland here and we're both shooting like crazy. Wow. So he's your second shooter uh, or does, does he? Yeah. Have so, uh, so he's my associate photographer. So, uh, we, we both technically will second shoot for one another if, um, if the other isn't booked, but, um, uh, we are now booking him out as well. Um, and have already started booking him out for both this year and uh, for the rest of this year and for 2017. Oh, that's great. Man. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's awesome that you guys can come together and, and do this and, and mm -hmm. work work really well at it. Um, so um, here, here's a basic uh, question. I think a lot of photographers are starting off. They want to know, um, and I've seen some of your images here. What, what, uh, what camera do you use and, and which which lenses are your which are your primary lenses that you you take to your weddings yeah so um one of our key uh, philosophies within the business is just keeping everything as simple as possible because things can get haywire really fast um so we both shoot dual cameras on wedding days um we have the whole fast money maker straps uh for those and so we have uh 5D Mark threes and all prime lenses. And that's all we use. So primarily, uh, 35, 50 and 85 are our go-tos. Um, yeah. Great. Um, awesome. So what do you do as far as the, uh, the macro stuff? Like, like let's say the details as far as the range and stuff like that. How do you go about that? Yeah, we do have a hundred millimeter macro. That's kind of like our fourth lens, but it literally, it pretty much only comes out for ring shots. Um, and so there's times that, because we don't necessarily shoot like some crazy ring shot at every single wedding, um, depending on time and whatnot. Like sometimes we won't even bring it with us. So 35, 50 and 85 are pretty much what we have on our cameras all day. Um, and sometimes it, it kind of switches around where, uh, we'll go in with those four lenses. So John may be shooting with a 50 and hundred all day where I'll be shooting 35, 85 or some other combination of that. Right. Awesome. Really cool. Um, that's great. We're going to jump into your photograph now, uh, Robert. Uh, there's five images that Robert uh, shared with us, and we're going to go uh, down the list here. Um, so let me let me just bring those up here so you guys could see them. Um, I'm also going to bring up the Q and A. If you guys have any questions, you can ask it, uh, Robert or myself. I'll be happy to answer anything you guys have in mind. But I'm going to go ahead and just uh, start with the images. We're going to go over five images that Robert has shot here. And um, here we go. Okay. You guys should be seeing it now. Robert, can you see them on, on your screen now? I can. You can? Okay, very good. So we have this one image right here. Um, the first image is apparently there's, there's a beautiful waterfall. And it seems to be cold, and, and these couple, this couple right here are just holding each other really well. And there's some beautiful lighting on it also. Um, and, and before I jump into your images here, Robert, I need to ask you, um, I, I, obviously you're not shooting film, um, but it has a film look to it. And, and, and I noticed that at least these five images and, and the ones on your website also have this kind of sense of film. Um, do you mind sharing 
the preset you're using or do you have your own customized preset? I understand that some photographers out there, they create or they form formulate their own preset and, and they right. use it throughout their wedding. Um, do you mind sharing just a bit of, of how you do some of the uh, post processing on these images here? Definitely, yeah. So we use uh, Visco um, for everything that we do. Um, it's, it's always funny to me too, because I think I've purchased almost every single Visco pack um, and we use one preset from the first pack and that's all we use. <laughs> um, and uh, we have like, it's definitely like majorly altered. Um, I started using this about four years ago. And, uh, and so we've definitely like, we have our own preset now, I guess you could say, um, but it's based on um, Portrait 160 um, out of the Visco pack. So literally, every single image that we process gets gets our preset on it. Um, we have one for color and one for black and white. And uh, and then from there, it's just kind of going in and, and, you know, making sure different areas are darkened if they need to be or lightened if they need to be. Um, but yeah, it's that one preset for everything. This go for you guys that don't know this, uh, these are presets uh, for professional photographers that they can use and, and give them that uh, the, the field of, of the film look that we had uh, back then, uh, we can get some beautiful um, different tones and, and, you know, we can get some also some really nice black and whites. I've looked in, into it myself. I, I believe I'm using right now the red leaf, which is very similar, but um, they have, you know, like the portrait, portrait 160, 200, you know, 400 with the different ISOs and, and, uh, you know the different dynamic ranges that that film had. Uh, they they uh, they mimic that. Um, so they're awesome presets. And uh, thank you, Robert, for sharing that. I appreciate it. Yeah, that. and I, I definitely think like for for any beginning photographers, um, I say I, like I don't know. Now I look back and I think it's funny that I've bought every Visco pack and whatnot. Now I'm only using one from the first pack. But um, I think that for a lot of photographers, like in finding you know, their look and their style of what really inspires them, what really pushes them in the industry um, to be unique. Like I would encourage people like, don't, don't really switch things up. I get a lot of questions from photographers about how do you keep things looking consistent? Um, and this is kind of one of the ways that we keep things looking consistent is just choosing one and stick and sticking with it um, until you get it so down that you, you can veer off if you need to for certain images um, but for the most part, I always encourage couple or um, encourage photographers choose one preset and use that on everything. Awesome, awesome. Here's a here's a second question before we go into these photographs. Um, you know, the question is um, JPEG or RAW, Robert? What, what do you shoot with? Oh, RAW, RAW for sure. Yeah, we, well, technically both. Uh, with the with the Mark threes, they have dual card sl card slots, um, and so we'll shoot raw um, in one card and then large JPEG to the other, just as like a backup um, in case something weird happens with the card or something. We've never had that happen, but for us, we're crazy about backup. So we're, we're always covered. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, most definitely. Uh, so you, you, you shoot raw on the primary, uh, the number one slot and then the second slot is the slot where you put your compact. I mean, your, yeah. The yeah. Um, compact flash is, is where you, you, you uh, store your JPEGs. And then right. when you back it up, you have both sets. And uh, I take it you also back it up on another hard drive. Uh, yeah, yeah. Our backup process is pretty extensive. So um, we we have um, at minimum three different copies of all of just the raw files um, the night of any wedding or shoot. Great. That's awesome. All right, Robert. So let's go go into these photographs here. So, um, what exactly? How did you get this photograph? And how did you how did you get here? I mean, it seems like you know it, it's a beautiful background, and, and I, I also imagine that you know th there's these beautiful sceneries in, in, in Portland where you live, also. Um, yeah. So they're a little cold too. They're, they're, um, <laughs> so can you tell me a little bit about this image here? Yeah. So uh, this image. Um, really, I feel like was a really defining moment for me. Um, this was after that 10 months of my wife and I traveling around the world shooting weddings. Um, we, uh, we, we pretty much came back home and we were like, let's move somewhere. Let's go somewhere that we want to be at. It's really going to, um, you know, inspire us both personally, but also very much professionally. 
And so um, Portland, we knew nothing about Portland uh, before we moved here. We actually um, decided to move here before we had ever even visited. And so um, the Northwest has always been really inspiring to me. Um, and so we moved up here and in the process of all that, I had a couple that contacted me to shoot, um, shoot their wedding. Uh, and that was Sebastian and Tessa who's in this photo. Sebastian's actually a photographer in Sacramento, uh, California. So if you're out there, he is an incredible guy. Um, oh. but, uh, this was why this was kind of a really, um, a huge turning point I feel like in my career um, was even though this was shot, this was shot about two years ago, I think something like that. Um, they, I had been, you know, going through the industry and it, at first when you're a beginning photographer, I think there's a lot of times like you're trying to figure out who you are as a photographer, as an artist and you know what your style is going to be. And there's so many little, you know, parts of that. But um, uh, I think a lot of times photographers start out by emulating other photographers. And so that was of course the same route that I took um, where I was like looking at people that inspired me, trying to do what they were doing, thinking that's what you should do. Um, but I think in that you start to like pull pieces from different people that inspire you and that eventually makes up who you are. And uh, one of the things that um, was a huge philosophy in just what I wanted to do starting back in early 2014 was um, I found this, this very, um, what would be the word? I, I found out how much relationships matter to being a photographer and, and especially being a photographer for these people in this season of their lives. And so um, when I sh shooting throughout the, you know, as we travel in 2014, I was really wanting to connect with my couples on a very personal level um, and not just from a, you know, they book us, maybe we have a Skype meeting and then I show up on the wedding day, but really like taking the time to, you know, meet up with them, maybe have multiple Skype calls throughout the, uh, throughout the, you know, engagement season or whatever and really get to know them. And so as I was doing that in 2014 and really figuring that out, um, Tess and Sebastian contacted me. And we grew really close, really fast, had several Skype calls and whatnot. Um, and then Sebastian, uh, actually both of them ended up, um, coming up to Portland, I think like a week and a half after my wife and I moved here. Um, I think we were still like unpacking boxes and they were heading up here to, to, uh, head to a conference. Um, and so we of course were like, Hey, come stay with us. So they came and stayed with us for a few days, really got to know them. And at that point, and we did their engagement session up here. And, um, this was, I think in the first two or three frames that I had ever photographed in Oregon. And so this was the first shoot I had done up here. Um, and it was just the culmination of everything that I wanted, um, from the relationship aspect to the nature landscape aspect, um, this was shot in January of 2015. Um, and so it was incredibly cold. Um, we're like on this river with this waterfall. I fell in the river minutes, like actually right before I took this image, I fell in the river. So I'm actually, um, standing in like sub zero water as I'm shooting this image. <laughs> um, and, uh, and yeah, so it was just like this crazy culmination of like this whole journey of traveling the world, finally getting somewhere that we felt like really inspired by. Um, and, and this image really propelled me into what that, uh, what the future was going to look like being based in the Northwest. That's awesome. Really cool. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, it happens to us as photographers that there's a per particular moment, you know, in our career, what we're doing that, that really hits us and, and it opens our eyes um, to, to see that there's more for us, you know, uh, Definitely. I think it's, it's, it's based a lot of it in, in experiences, uh, yeah. that we go through that it really, uh, changes the way we, we see things and, and we do our work, you know? Um, so that's, that's a great story. I, I appreciate that, that, uh, story that you shared with us, Robert, yeah. I have the second photograph here. Uh, which seems like it's more like of a candid shot and they just got off their Land Rover. It actually looks like a, like an ad for Land Rover. <laughs> it looks awesome though. One day. <laughs> uh, can you tell me a little bit about this, uh, what's going on here? Yeah. Um, hold on just a second. I, uh, I need a charger for my computer. Um, so this image, I've actually never shared this image. This is the first time anyone's seen this one. Um, this was shot several weeks back in Iceland. Um, Chrissy and Ryan uh, 
are an incredible couple. Um, they live in London and uh, we're shooting their wedding next year in Hawaii. Um, they wanted to do something really, really adventurous for their engagement session. Um, and so they were like, hey, let's all fly to Iceland and let's shoot there. So we drove, we had, uh, I'm gonna put this charger on here really fast. Oh, uh, can I get a computer charger? Okay. Yeah. Um, the, uh, we had this Land Rover that we were traveling. We had three days we were shooting um, actually for several different things. We were doing some product shots for Holdfast Gear um, while we were there, as well as uh, shooting some content for Western Digital. Um, all while, all the while shooting with Chrissy and Ryan. And so it was just this insane, insane three days that we were traveling around Iceland. And uh, I'm going to plug in really fast here so I don't die mid interview. Um, and this was, um, I think it was day two that we were, that we were driving um, and we were going east on the south coast of Iceland and we passed by this crazy, like vast, apocalyptic looking area that was like all this like black sand and rock um, just as far as the eye could see. And as we were passing by it, um, it was just completely flat. But then there was this one area that had all these like jagged rocks and whatnot. And I think we were driving it like it was like 1 a.m. when we saw this. And so I immediately just saw this, this somewhat of a picture, but also just a full shoot that was uh, with our vehicle on this black sand with them in these black and white outfits and uh um i think at the time it was raining or something like that and we were coming back that way in a few days so i was like guys when we come back we need to stop here and so this was taken actually on our way back to the airport um we had we had gone as far as like 10 or 11 hours down uh on the south coast all the way to like the east fjords of iceland and so on our way back it was like i don't know two or three a.m um, and the sun never, it never gets fully dark, um, at this time of the year in Iceland. And so this is like two or 3 AM. It's still like somewhat light outside, but, but pretty dark. Um, and so we drove out into the middle of this black sand and, you know, lit, I really wanted to light them primarily with the, uh, with the vehicle lights, um, and just kind of have this very like adventurous, dark, moody, um, it, it was very rainy while we were there the entire time mountains off in the background type of thing. And so, um, yeah, this, this was kind of one of those just inspirational shoots. Um, it, it looks, and, it looks very, uh, you know, adventurous at the same time and, and, and kind of isolated, you know, kind of like you said, you know, um, you know, they they seem like the last two human beings standing on the face of yeah. the earth. You know? yeah, awesome. exactly. yeah. It's really yeah. cool. Um, Awesome. So let's let's go ahead and skip through the uh, the next photograph. And earlier, before we went on on the interview, you said that you had a, quite a bit of story of a story behind this image. Um, yeah. <laughs> you want to share in it with us here? Uh, what what yeah, is yeah. going on? And yeah, so this what was uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and I may I may I just want to like pre warn people not to you know give any spoilers. I may share some of this story at my talk at Amity in in August, but um, uh, this was this couple right here, like were was kind of the final piece of the craziest weekend of my entire life as a wedding photographer. Um, I had, I was shooting a wedding in Miami, Florida. Um, this was in February of 2014, I think. Um, and I flew to, I flew to Miami. Um, uh, and John actually at the time was over on the East coast. So John drove down and, and shot the wedding with me in Miami. And that entire weekend, it was just the, just the most insane weekend. Like everything that could have gone wrong was going wrong. Like our car broke down in the middle of like a hundred plus degree heat in Miami. Um, oh, God. Uh, the, um, it, it was like torrential downpour on the wedding day. Uh, everything was outdoors, no backup plan. Um, and it was a multicultural wedding. It was like a Persian wedding, um, Persian slash American wedding. And so like, there was just a lot going on throughout the day. Um, you know, a lot of emotion, a lot of all the stuff. And, uh, and at the very end of the night, uh, and let, let me just kind of preface this as well with like, uh, Melissa and Oliver were our wedding couple. They are absolutely amazing people. They just were complete troopers throughout the wedding day, somehow made it through. Um, but at the very end of the night, um, 
uh, we were all on the dance floor, dan like you know, shooting and dancing, and there was like belly dancers, and it was just it, it, this crazy everything going on. And all of a sudden, all these people rushed over on the dance floor, and they were all like huddled together, and like there were so many things happening in the day. We were just like, "What's going on now? Is there like break dancers or what?" All of a sudden, the music cuts off, the lights come on, and somebody had had basically was dying on the dance floor, had a heart attack, oh. and uh, and it was just very very intense moment. Um, and uh, I think that I believe that the um, the the man actually did die, and like Ugh. you know paramedics came in shocked him back to life like it was just this crazy this That's was 30 this was 30 minutes before their exit and this is like this is how their wedding ended and it was just something you cannot prepare for as a wedding photographer and what do you even do in that moment and um i had built a really great relationship with melissa and oliver and so i think it was a really um kind of a testament to also our philosophy and just like being able to be there for them in that moment uh, as much as we could be you know um and uh, so anyways, crazy weekend. Uh, the next day uh, I'm flying out um, and I was flying back to Portland. And so I'm in Atlanta about to take off and I posted on Instagram and just said, hey, I'm going to LA. I'm, I have like a four hour layover. If you're a photographer, whoever, um, if you wanna meet up in LAX, let's grab a beer or something like that. And so I send this, this, uh, you know, this photo off on Instagram, this post. And uh, I landed in LA with a comment on my post um, from Megan. And uh, it's like, hey, I'm flying out as well in a few hours. Could we meet? And I'm like, um, sure. Like, <laughs> I was a little like, okay, that's weird, yeah. sure. So I went over, I sent her a message really quick and was just like, hey, here's my number if you wanna, if you wanna meet. Minutes later, I get a text from Megan and she's like, hey, we're flying out. We're coming in. We're an hour outside of the airport about to go through security. Let's meet. Uh, what airline are you flying? I'm like, Delta. She's like, I am too. It was just all these crazy circumstances. An hour later, I met with Megan and her mom in the Delta Sky Lounge in LAX, talked for two hours um, and ended up flying back to Portland with a check in hand contract signed with for Megan and Josh's wedding. Uh, wow. And this is Megan and Josh in this photo. Um, and so it was just like this insane weekend that, that ended in this very beautiful way of, of um, you know, our brand of traveling, meeting adventurous people and doing crazy things and stuff at all. Like we booked a wedding in an airport, which was insane to us. Um, and so this is Megan and Josh on New Year's Eve uh, this last year in downtown Los Angeles. Wow. Wow, that's great. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> that's great at all. Wow. <clears throat> Uh, so they were from LA then, this couple here? Uh, no, they're actually, they live in Denver. Um, oh, okay. But they travel to LA a lot, and so they decided to do their wedding there. And I guess from a technical standpoint too, this was kind of a crazy image because their wedding was like at night, like it was a nighttime ceremony, which was the first time we had ever done that. Um, and afterwards we wanted to, of course, do their, their photos and everything because they didn't see each other until the ceremony, but we were shooting completely in the dark. Um, and so we're on the fourth street bridge here in downtown LA. And, uh, it was one of those moments that you're kind of looking around as a natural light photographer. And I'm like, all right, what are we going to do? Like, we have no light. We have like street lights, but it wasn't anything that was usable. And so, uh, this image was shot with a 35, um, 1.4 L series lens. Um, and I had a, uh, 600 EXRT on top of my camera. And so the fourth street bridge has these huge columns every like 30 feet or something like that on it. Um, and so the, they're positioned probably 10 feet off the column and I'm shooting them with uh, downtown LA in the background. Um, and I have my 600 EXRT pointed backwards into an angle to where it's flashing onto the column and turning the column into my light source into basically a huge strip box. Um, right. They're being lit by the column. Uh, and then you can see a little bit of rim light on Josh's shoulder and that's just from the oncoming cars. Um, so it's just kind of a crazy story, um, kind of a crazy moment of an image for like, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna get this um, in the dark? I, I take it you had a high ISO also and not able to capture the the light from you know the city and also pick up that little rim light on his shoulder. Um, yeah, I think I think I was at like sixteen hundred right here. Sixteen hundred, that's great. Yeah, very nice. And you said that was a thirty-five millimeter. 
Yeah. Uh, and, and it's pro I think it's dumped all the way to one four right here. Right. That's great. Yeah. Beautiful. It turned out really nice. It turned out really sharp too. Very, very cool. All right. Um, let's see. So we got uh, two other ones, um, guys. If you have any questions at this time, uh, you can you can ask ask away. Fairway. I you know there's quite a bit of people they're watching uh, already. I think the last time I checked on on the Facebook uh, fan page, we had. Um, now look at it again. I have a uh, 138 people. Holy cow! That's yeah, now it's 154 people. You know. Um, All right. But uh, so, so there are some people watching us right now. Um, so I guess if there's no other questions or, or no questions, I will, we'll go ahead and move forward to the next photograph. Cool. Um, if anyone even has questions like for any of the other images, feel free to shoot them out. Yeah. Um, so this one here, uh, uh, this is obviously not the wedding day, correct, Robert? This is also... Uh, this is like an engagement session or something that you did? Yeah, yeah, this was actually uh, shot a week ago. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, so uh, tell me, um, how do, what's going on in the background? Is this like, are they standing inside a forest? I can see some rocks in the bottom. Is this next to a creek or something? Yeah, so we're standing in a, we're standing in a river right here. Um, this is shot in Oregon, um, and I actually didn't shoot this image. Uh, this is all John right here, and so um, we're going to be releasing this session here probably in the next week or two um, on the blog. Um, and it, we're kind of with that going to be kind of announcing John is like he's part of the team now. We can take on more weddings, that sort of thing. And so, um, so yeah, it's kind of. I wanted to share this image for one because like I'm absolutely in love with it. It's my favorite from the session and I didn't take it. And I'm like, typical, like I'm going to get shown up constantly for my associates. Um, but uh, Olivia and Aaron um, are absolutely incredible. Um, this water is quite cold that we're standing in right now. And it was just one of those like, well, let's just take our shoes off and go out into the water. And um, we're definitely, whenever we're shooting, especially like in nature and stuff are, I think the, the key thing that we are always looking for above anything else is light. And so um, this was shot, I believe at like probably four or five o'clock, um, which in Oregon time is like very early in the day because uh, our sun sets at like nine 30 or nine o'clock, something like that. And so um, we're, we're dealing with quite difficult lighting situations uh, in this river bed and around this forest that we're in or whatever. But John pulled this off magically <laughs> Great image. I, I like it myself a lot um yeah and, and i was gonna say it was just a natural light up you know obviously it is that's yeah. uh, very nice really cool yep I like the rule thirds of it uh, how you place them down there uh, that yeah. looks amazing. really cool um and then lastly we have this one image here um robert um is that you right there? <laughs> it kind of looks like like it would be you that that uh, the beard and that is not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> so um, I grow with a black dress, and, and and the sky was like it looks like either it was about to rain or it was maybe early morning or something. Um, yeah, it, it was on the cusp of raining right here. Right. Can you can you tell me uh, why this image here? Um, and yeah. Uh, why did you? Why do you feel strong about this? I mean, you you can't really see his face, but uh, but the, her expression uh, and her face looks good, and the yeah. way the posture, the the, your, the pose, and I, I really like his hands. How how even his hands look so defined on her, and because of the lighting you captured, it, it looks awesome. Also, um, yeah. So this this image was. Um uh, there's a couple reasons why this image means a lot to me. Um, I, I started doing education uh, for other photographers several years ago in the industry. And um, just like with our, with our weddings and with our couples that we work with, we really believe that relationships change everything and that they really matter. And so um, my approach is that exact same way with photographers. And I think that, I think that we are in a time in the industry, honestly, that um, is a little bit scary. Um, it, it is, we're at this point where people are figuring out that you can make a little bit of money doing photography education. Um, but with that, uh, at times it kind of feels like maybe 
there's, there's, um, you know, information that's being shared or things happening in the industry that, um, maybe don't have as much integrity behind them or, um, or it's just something that maybe people are passionate about, but, but it's, it's like a side project to, um, you know, the rest of the business and shooting photos and that sort of thing. And so, um, we're always trying to think up what can we do different to make an impact. Um, and one of those ways is, uh, about a year and a half ago, um, I had this idea of, um, well, let me back up to a lot of the things that we, a lot of the things that we do, we think, um, first about what would we want in as education in the industry. And so as I was mulling this over about a year and a half ago, uh, two years ago, I was sitting there going, man, I would love to find a photographer that really inspires me um, and reach out to them and basically like have them mentor me. Um, and what would that be like long-term uh, where it's not just like a one day workshop, you know, or even just a talk at a conference, but where, how could I really connect with somebody um, who has a deep rooted philosophy, a deep rooted brand and, and really learn from them. And so because of all that, um, I started a long-term mentorship. And so, uh, I have, I, I kind of tested it out last year with a photographer from Canada. Um, and we went an entire year where I just basically mentored him, um, throughout the year. He basically had full access to me, um, to like, I mean, text, phone call, email, whatever the case was, we were kind of always constantly in a conversation. So if he had a situation where, um, you know, maybe he had an issue with a client or didn't quite know how to handle a situation, he could reach out to me and I could kind of help guide him through, um, through the process of like, what's the best way of going about this. And so, um, we tested that out last year and it was just a huge success. And so in December we launched, um, the, the mentorship and uh, took on a handful of photographers this year that are all spread out across the country. Um, and uh, it's just been incredible to, you know, really dive into not only these photographers businesses, but their, their lives as well and um, get to know them personally and how that affects their business and really guide them through the business of things. And um, with all of that, along with like all the things that we include in that from a, you know, from afar, from a web standpoint or, whatever is we also do an in-person workshop. And so this is an image from our workshop this year. Everyone in the mentorship flew into Portland, um, which was incredible because we had basically already, you know, met each other online and had already really known each other. I did several one-on-one um, -on -one sessions with everyone prior to the workshop. And so we really like showed up and everyone was friends. And I think it really um, made the, the workshop experience really unique as well. Um, so this is Kelsey and Lee, um, just a real couple that we found in Portland uh, that volunteered to be a part. Um, and so this was one of the final images. I actually almost died shooting this image. I almost fell down this cliff. They're actually like, I think like 150 feet in the air right now. Um, on, on my Instagram, uh, there's a video of like an aerial shot that was done with a drone of this moment. Um, and it's just insane how, where we're at. It's kind of a stupid location, <laughs> um, a little crazy, but, uh, but yeah, like I just loved it from the lighting standpoint, the emotion standpoint, a lot of our work is very dark and moody, um, very intimate. And so, uh, we're also, we love, you know, flowing dresses with wind and whatnot. And so it was just kind of this culmination of crazy weather and, uh, beautiful lighting, beautiful couple, um, and having everyone there from the mentorship, um, to kind of be a part of it. Well, well, congratulations. It's a, it's an awesome, awesome photograph. I, I, I truly Thank like you. it. As a matter of fact, I, I think it's besides this one and, and the Land Rover pick, I, I think those are my two favorites personally. Great. Uh, I, I truly like these two images. Um, so Robert, I understand you're also doing a workshop for us, uh, you know, an amity yeah. in Phoenix. Yep. And, uh, do you mind telling us about embrace? And what, uh, what are you going to be talking about? If you don't mind sharing just, just a little bit, just to kind of give everyone that's uh, watching us here today, just have them just get a little teased a little bit <laughs> of what yeah, you're going to be, what you're gonna be uh, saying out there. Yeah. So um, when it comes to workshops, uh, part of our philosophy with, within education um, is 
we feel like workshops are really, there's a lot of workshops happening. Um, and so we've kind of decided at least for now, um, the only time that, that I'm ever going to be teaching a workshop is, is connected to a conference. And so, um, uh, that's kind of the only time we're ever going to offer in-person things like this, um, aside from the mentorship. Um, but we are going to be doing a one day workshop, um, with, uh, within Amity and it's called embrace and it's really kind of twofold. One, it's, um, kind of us walking through our philosophy with business and how we've gone about building the business that we have. Um, embrace for us is, uh, part of our style. It's, a lot of, we, we very rarely shoot images where the couple's not touching each other. Um, and so we're going to be walking through, you know, doing a live shoot um, with how I go about posing and directing in a very natural way. Um, but then as well, um, embrace also for us is embracing really who you are and um, who you're meant to be in this industry rather than trying to be somebody else. And so, um, so yeah, it'll be kind of an interesting day of kind of walking through what that means. Um, I definitely don't want to do a workshop that's just going to be like, Hey, look at me. This is what I do. Um, because ultimately like everybody who's attending, like there's no point in trying to be who I am. Like you need to be yourself. And so I think that there's always going to be, um, you know, something valid in learning from photographers and how they do things and seeing what parts of those, what are the nuggets out of those that really inspire you to do something unique. But, um, uh, so yeah, we definitely want to push more towards that way. Um, and we're going to kind of be covering both. That's great. That's really awesome, Robert. That's really good. Um, Robert, I, I think we're pretty wrapped up here. I think he told us quite a bit. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to go see you now. <laughs> you know, uh, that's really good. I love your website, by the way. Um, you know, your images are amazing, like I said before. Um, and, and you travel all over the place. Um, can you tell us some of the places you've been to already, Robert? Yeah. Um... So we've done uh, quite a bit in Europe so far. Um, we've done, uh, well, I mean, we've been all over the States, but um, in Europe, we've done uh, Spain, the Netherlands, England, um, Iceland. Uh, we've shot in Kenya. Um, I've been to uh, Bali, Indonesia for a wedding. I'm actually leaving in a week from today to go back to Bali for another wedding. Um, and so amidst all the travels, whether it's stateside, we shoot a lot on the West Coast. Um, and in Hawaii and stuff. But, um, amidst all of that, uh, we also shoot a lot here locally in Oregon. Um, so yeah, we're kind of just wherever anybody wants us to go, we're going. <laughs> That's really, really great. Um, how do people usually find you, Robert? I mean, is it word of mouth or is it, uh, and, and what I mean, the, the destination weddings, how do, how do, are these people from Europe? They're hiring you to go, you know, from here from the states over there or do they live around your area and then taking you out there how, how does that usually work yeah it's kind of a little bit of both we we do shoot um some destination which are like people that are traveling to a location um but we also shoot a lot of local people too um i just got back uh about two weeks ago um, from a month-long trip um, shooting in austria and uh, canada the northeast us iceland i was in germany for a little while um and so people partly, we definitely have like a strong referral based system um, that, uh, that works really well for us, but we also have a lot that comes from social media. And so when I first started out with wanting to travel, Instagram was huge. Um, and I, I actually have two different Instagram accounts. One is uh, a personal Instagram that's just Robert J. Hill. And then all the wedding work is Robert J. Hill photography. Um, and we have a lot of people that find us on Robert J. Hill photography and then go, Hey, we want you to come here or, you know, we want to, sometimes we even have people that travel to us. Um, I have a wedding in Austin, Texas in, um, October that oh. the couple was like, Hey, we want to, um, you know, do our engagement session in Oregon. So they flew up to Oregon. We did their engagement session and then I'm going to fly to Austin and shoot their wedding. So it's kind of always something a little bit differently, but, um, uh, but yeah, it's partly social media and then partly referral based. Oh, that's great. Really good. Awesome. Well, Robert, uh, like you said, um, this is awesome. This is really good. And, and you really opened up. You, you've been an open book here today and we really appreciate it. Uh, we can't wait to see you in August and um, we can't wait to hear you speak out there. And, and uh, I mean, just now you dumped a lot of information already. <laughs> 
and I know you're full of a lot of other stuff and that you want to share with us. And uh, well, I, I, I just all I have to say is thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Appreciate appreciate everything. Uh, thank you for for sharing. And yeah. and I'll see you out there soon. Yeah, I'm excited to uh, to meet you guys in person and and meet everybody else who's who's coming to the conference. And if and if anybody ends up having questions as well, like feel free to comment on Instagram, shoot me a message on Facebook. Uh, we I always do my best to try and respond to everyone, you know, amidst all the craziness. But um, but yeah, like we're we're definitely open books, and um, we have a lot of opportunities for education on our website. Um, and there's a ton coming up. We're actually going to be. I can't share too much about. It really pushing to launch something really really big actually at the Amity conference um, and uh, and so if um, if you are there like we'll be sharing more of that but, um, but yeah if anybody ever has questions never never hesitate to reach out to us all right well there you go Robert Hill thank you so much guy and have a great day and uh, we'll see you guys out there we'll see you soon Sweet. thanks okay. David all right thank you bye, -bye.